everyone welcome back to the channel today we'll be doing an unboxing of the uh, subwoofer from Stark Sounds this is one of their sealed subs that they offer um, so let's go ahead and unbox and uh, see what we got inside as usual and be careful when you're doing an unboxing you don't want to scratch whatever is inside if it's too close to the top so just lift up the box and uh, try to be as careful as possible all right let's see what we got inside so the box is pretty i mean well packaged um i did see a dent right here so what happened ups you know got to be careful a little bit next time uh, but you know, it looks like the internal box was able to hold it up so everything looks fine um, typically I would say let's go over the accessories first but there's really nothing to it <laughs> only accessory that's in here is the uh, power cable so that's all there is to it so let me try to get this out of here I'm probably gonna have to tilt the box to the side so that I can pull it out and not have to strain my back so let me go ahead and do that well protected so should be good all right all right so they have a plastic cover on top well protected i guess from scratches and smudges and whatnot so we'll just carefully take this off a very budget friendly uh subwoofer um, Probably the main reason why I decided to uh, to get it from them. I think uh, what you get for this price point is definitely impressive, and we'll definitely go through it through the different features. So this is their SW15. This is their sealed 15-inch sub, and the reason why I decided to go with the sealed sub rather than their ported ones. They actually have a ported sub. Um, I think it's the SP15, I want to say. I'm not entirely sure what the model number is, but they do have a ported sub, a 15-inch ported sub, which um, I, I guess can provide more output, um, but that wasn't really what I was worried about. Um, I wanted something that provides a more even base. Um, and I'm used to sealed subs anyways. So this is rated at 900 watts peak. Um, RMS is 450. Obviously max SPL output of 116 dB. So what's interesting about this sub is that although they have the ported sub, I think the ported sub is rated to go down to 19 Hertz. This one is actually, they rated to go down all the way down to 14 Hertz. So that's another reason why I decided to go with the sealed sub. Since I plan to have multiple subs in the room, um, so starting off, I'll just have two subs in the front just to provide a more even base distribution across the room that I'm using it in. It does have a 15 inch driver, like we talked about. It's able to go from 14 hertz at the low end and 200, 240 hertz at the high end. Another concern that I had too was that, you know, because my screen sits so low, um, near the floor, you know, I don't have that much space at the bottom to really have a uh, You know a, a ported sub sit there. So This one is actually about 17 inches tall um, It is 18 inches deep. It's 16 inches wide. So, you know, it's not too big um, It definitely has you know, it's it's not the smallest sub obviously um, but then, you know, it's not the largest sub where it's going to block out my screen. So this is a perfect size and will fit perfectly right under my screen. Another thing too, um, with this particular um, sub, it's not going to have those bells and whistles like SVS subs, like apps and, you know, the different features. All you get is a sub. That's pretty much it. And I have no complaints about that. And that's one of the reasons why I think this, this subwoofer, I don't want to call it cheap, but it's definitely one of the most affordable subs, especially for the performance that I think, you know, that you would get. And I've watched a lot of reviews and, you know, I heard nothing but good stuff about this particular company. I haven't really heard much about them um, until recently. I, I know more of like the, the big name companies like SVS, but this one, 
um, you know, I'm quite excited to try it out and, you know, you save your money and you still get, you know, good performance out of them. So let's just uh, start off taking a look at the front. So this is a cloth grill. Um, it's not a metal grill that you used to if you have like SVS subs. Um, and it is not, yeah. So it's not attached by magnets. So um, it's actually a uh, little little things right here that you actually have to push into the little holes in the front of the sub. 15 inch driver, like I mentioned, um, you know, definitely feels quality. You got the Stark Sounds logo here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip it to the back and let's see what we're working with. All right, so we're gonna go over the back. Um, there's not really a whole lot to it. Um, so you, of course, you have the power port here. It is a, three, a grounded um, power cable that you attach here that, that it also comes with. You, I'll go over this later. Um, you have some of the controls that we have here too. You have the crossover settings. In my case, what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna have this set to, probably gonna have this set to the highest um, because I want my receiver to handle um, all of the crossover settings. I don't wanna um, do it through the, um, the actual sub here. You have the uh, phase control. Um, I typically set this to zero, I think. You know, a lot of the delay settings and th things like that, that should be handled by the uh, receiver. You have a volume knob here. I typically put this in the middle. And you know, after you run your room calibration, you know, you run Odyssey or anything like that. If you want a little bit more bass, you can of course go back later on and turn it up if you want to. But starting things off, I think it's good to just leave it on the middle. Let's move over to the input side. You have a, uh, line in so we have a stereo pair here so if your particular receiver whether whether that's a uh, an av receiver or just a stereo receiver if it doesn't have like um a dedicated subwoofer output and it has the actual you know right and left rca outputs you can utilize this particular option here and then uh, below that you have the subwoofer in and this is what i'll actually be using myself so I'll be attaching the uh, subwoofer line and connecting it, connecting it to here from my receiver. Having an XLR input is, is quite impressive for a subwoofer um, at this price range because you typically see these on higher end uh, subwoofers. Um, you typically only see the RCA inputs uh, for a subwoofer at this price range. So you do have an RCA in and an RCA out. Um, which provides you with balanced connection, whereas the RCA, the, uh, I'm sorry, the XLR would be able to provide you with a balanced connection. Um, the RCA is not uh, balanced, so it's unbalanced. So if your receiver has an XLR output, you can definitely make use of this. And you can use the output to daisy chain multiple subs. You know, I would have liked to see an RCA out as well. I think that would have been pretty nice so that it's, a lot easier to daisy chain uh, multiple subs in a room versus to use like a Y splitter cable. But you know, you have a workaround that's available, which is to use a Y splitter. So you can always use that. But it would have been nice to see um, an RCA output similar to the XLR. And you of course have the power on and off here. Just leave it on. Oh, um, you do have the, you also have for the signal at least, you have the option to leave it on auto. You have a little toggle switch here. You have an option to leave it on auto, off, or on. In my case, I think when it receives the signal, it's just going to power it on anyway, so I just leave it on auto. And that's pretty much it. And, you know, this is the plate amp. I think the, uh, the amp that they use is called Brev, which is what you see here. It's not a glossy finish, which I do like. You're not gonna get crazy reflections. Um, if you're into a, a glossy finish, I think they have other um, subwoofer models that you can go for. Not the SW15. Um, These only have the matte finish to it, so I do like that. I'll go ahead and hook this up, test it out, see how it goes. And I'm probably going to have another video where I'm going to try to do my best to display, you know, what the subwoofers, I guess, sound like. It's going to be a little hard to uh, display that in using YouTube, 
but I'll do my best. I'll use uh, a stereo mic to capture um, as much of it as possible. And um, I'll have a more in-depth um, review, I guess, after uh, setting it up and listening to them. And I'll let you know what I think.